been about a month since we sat down with you, maybe yep. five weeks since we saw you in Washington. And, you know, things can change pretty quickly, especially when you're looking at the global economy. There's a whole lot of gloom and doom when you talk to people here. But last time we talked to you, you, you were slightly more optimistic. You, you said that it didn't look like it was maybe quite as dire as some people had been talking, at least not from your perspective. Well, and I, I still see things uh, in a similar way. I'm not as dire, maybe, as most as most are here. I, I just arrived, so I haven't been fully enlightened <laughs> with the views. So, but it'll but come. I'll, I'll get there. It'll come. <laughs> I'll get there. Um, and and I, I see things in a similar way that I did five, six weeks ago when we talked. I still think there are going to be pockets of strength, like our aerospace business, and really aerospace business more broadly, the energy segment, particularly both in terms of the classic hydrocarbon driven and renewables and sustainable fuels, we see strength there. But there's also going to be some short cycle businesses that are going to struggle. And we saw some positive signs, which is there's some indicators that maybe you've seen the worst of inflation. We're starting to tip over a little bit. But we have to remember that the Fed and other central banks, I mean, they have to have a fairly aggressive policy in order to make sure that inflation is really under control. So as I look at some of the major challenges facing us here in 23, they're kind of similar to 22. I mean, we still have the Ukraine-Russia conflict. We still have right. inflation. We still have energy challenges, although probably not this winter. So that's good news. But we still now have to think about next year. Well, and, you know, we, we, we feel like we dodged a bullet uh, just a couple of weeks ago here in Europe. It was way warmer than, than it usually is this time of year. And, and, and that definitely... Um, gave a little room for relief in terms of worried about high energy costs, what the reality was going to be if there'd be enough energy to go around. But it's getting cold right now. Is it, is it, is it too soon to say that this winter is not going to be a crunch? Well, based on the numbers I saw in terms of storage and so on, yeah. it's, it's fairly unlikely that Europe will see an energy crunch this winter. That's great. But we have to remember that <clears throat> the storage tanks got filled by Russian gas for the most part in the summer of, you know, whenever they, they started sending the gas over. That's going to have to be done differently as we get into the winter of 2024. And I still think that there are some challenges ahead for Europe uh, to make sure that there's no energy issues. A lot of what you're doing here, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of what you do here in Davos is going to be talking about initiatives related to climate change, things that companies are doing to try and get in line with climate change requirements in their countries and, and things that you have solutions for. How much of your business is that at this point? Well, it's over 60 percent of our business and even higher percentage of our R&D spend. So this is one of the key reasons we're here is to talk about a lot of those solutions. Um, and everybody's interested in talking about them. But key reason I come here is I don't get a chance to see 20 customers in a matter of two or three days. So, I mean, it's it's a great venue to see our global customers and uh and really get a chance to talk about some of their issues and some of the challenges they're going to be facing. There, there has been some talk recently that climate change may be get, getting pushed to a back burner, especially if recession does um, take place around the globe, that it would not be the immediate needs for, for, for leaders in every country. If you're worried about a recession, you're not looking at longer term stuff. What would that mean if that's the case for you? I mean, I, I think it's certainly possible, but I, some of the customers that we talk to, they are facing a tougher environment in 2023. But I haven't heard any say we're going to cut off our budget for some of our uh, renewable spend, some of our uh, alternative fuels, things of that nature. So I have not seen a correlation between a tougher economy and then a divestiture from a path to sustainability. Because all these businesses have to get have to get there, whether it's 2030, 2040, 2050. They've all ma made pledges to be carbon neutral. And you, know, you can't start in 2030 and get there. I mean, it's going to take multiple years.